Okay. And then I was also an English teacher in Korea for a while. Couldn't handle the weather in Korea. Oh. And then as far as like my, my government career, I thought was going great. It was just my publishing career was doing better. And I got to the point where I had to choose one. So, oh, actually, the- This is the Crit RPG Pop Crawl, where we talk with all the publishers in the progression fantasy and lit RPG space. Welcome to the Crit RPG Pop Crawl. With me today is someone really special. Ah, uh, so who are you? <laughs> so my name is Jessica, and I own Royal Guard Publishing. So it just basically it all started as my husband was an avid reader. Like he would read, I don't know, five, six, seven books, like almost a book a day. Sometimes more than that. He's like wow. a really fast reader. I'm super jealous of his reading speed. (laughs) And he was just like, hey, you know, I like have all these story ideas coming through my head. They'd come to him sometimes in dreams or like different things just from reading so much and just being a creative person. And he was like, I'm going to write a book. And I was like, cool, you should totally do that. And then we found out about like self-publishing through KDP. So he's like, I'm going to self-publish it. And I was like, oh, how cool would it be if like four people read your book, right? (laughs) (laughs) like that's so cool that you can do that and and then it did pretty well that was back our very first series griff the griffin writer and he was like well i want to make an audiobook and i was like okay i mean go for it right and we made the audiobook and then that did really well so he kept writing more series and then we were getting kind of good at the audiobook stuff like we had some good narrators that we were in contact with we we seem to be good with the market. So we uh, had some authors and ourselves take a risk on each other of publishing someone else's audiobook for them. And then that did well. And then that just started to grow. And because we're so active in the author communities, we're able to kind of be like more personal and stuff like that. And we we're getting to know everybody on a different level. And it's just grown to now over 400 audiobooks published. And then recently in 2023, We started publishing Kindle and paperback books for authors as well. That's going pretty well, too. We're growing very quickly, so it's very exciting. It's just obviously Mm -hmm. a lot of work. Oh, yeah. So as I mentioned, I was able to quit my day job to do this full time. And we have a family, too, and all that stuff um, that Mm -hmm. we're trying to balance together. Yeah, um, we're having that, fun and meeting a lot of awesome people all over the world. That's the coolest thing. Yeah, the, I people have always said like, "Oh, being an author is like a solitary profession," and I don't know if that's true at all. Um, no. I know that, for example, Maxime went to California, I think, and met like lots of writers over there. I know that some of the publishers do like regular meetups and stuff. I've met authors, and of course, there's Discord. So yeah, it's really not that lonely anymore. No, yeah, we have a Discord called Authors Break Room, where just Mm -hmm. authors basically can go for like their virtual break room. And it's not an official Royal Guard publishing thing, actually, just like something that he started a long time ago. So any authors are allowed to go in there. And that kind of gives that social space as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I like that. I like the fact that community building online is so easy now. I remember back in the day when you need you needed to like know someone who could like get you get you a team speak to server. And mm-hmm. then you would have to pay for that every month and host all the stuff and know your IP addresses. And now it's just like you click twice on Discord and you have a server. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's super great. Ah, decentralized, decentralized hosting. Mm, so good. You were talking about scaling. I'm an agile coach. So I know, I know about scaling. I know the problems that, that scaling brings with it with the you know, added complexity because suddenly it's no, no longer just like you and another person doing business, but it's like, you and five other guys or five other people who need to know the same thing as you do. Yeah, yeah. so that's actually what we're doing right now is we're trying to go expand into hiring some people. And then it's kind of crazy because up until this point, it's all existed in my head, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now I need to get that into something that someone else can follow. So we're working on that right now. Yeah, that sounds pretty dope. Huh. So you're growing. Is there any goal to your growth or are you just growing? 
I mean, we want to grow, but we don't want to lose who we are, which is being like a mm-hmm. personal publisher where we don't treat authors like a transaction, right? Like we basically what we have in Discord is a server with every author that we work with that's on Discord where we like personally are in there with them, talking to them sometimes every day. Like we know about their families, their life, like they're not just someone who hands us a manuscript. So we don't want to ever grow to surpass that point, but we're definitely interested in growing more. And we've added, I think we're up to 10 authors, like written authors now. So when you're when you're doing it on this scale like that it, that's quite a bit right because you're it's a very personal level on everything oh, yeah. um, so no i don't there's not really one goal it's just we want to be successful we want to be personal we want to still be a publisher by authors for authors situation mm-hmm. yeah that makes sense how how do you get into this entire thing by the way you you mentioned that that your husband wrote but is is there is there another point where you were like oh, cool, now I'm going to publish everything of his, or? So it was really the audio. So we really started as an audiobook publisher. Like, that is our main thing. So mm-hmm. it was just, like, he would be talking to the authors, and then he kind of would hand them off to me. Like, here, mm-hmm. I'm the one that writes the contract, signs the contract, and then I take it over from there. So I just started getting out there. It's like it just grew very slowly, well, maybe not slowly, but <laughs> it grew to be what it was. And then you kind of realized what it was. So, you know, we're going out there and then we're putting up auditions, yeah. meeting and training new narrators because we do mostly duet narration. So that kind of involves a little bit more training than just your basic narration. And that was like a learning process for us as well, because we were not audio engineers. So we had to learn mm-hmm. audio engineering basic stuff and we had a lot of help from uh, experienced narrators that we work with (laughs) (laughs) that taught us a lot of things and helped us and uh, like we had Gabriel Michael doing consulting work for us that he'd kind of come on with new teams and Mm -hmm. set them up um, which was amazing and very helpful then it was just kind of like hey at, at some point like I am becoming a full audiobook publishing house I need to be doing this full time and I kind of hit a milestone in my job that was like a good time to separate. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it just worked out that way. And then and then we just kept having people ask us, like, we want to publish ebooks with you. We want to publish paper box with you. Mm-hmm. We want to do writing publishing with you too. And at the time we were like, well, we're not set up for it yet, right? Like, because you need artists, you need editors full time for that to happen. And then Michael Angel came and he Ooh. was like, I want to do my, my Pirate Wizard series with you and I want you to do the Kindle side as well. So it'll be easier to link it on release. And I was like very apprehensive. And then I was like, OK, yes, we'll do it. And it <laughs> went well and we had fun. And then we kind of grew from there. We were able to find a person who can be our full time editor we were able to find some artists and graphic artists and all that stuff that we need to make this a machine and we appreciate all of them (laughs) (laughs) and we're working on growing that team too so we do need more editors we need more proofers beta readers all that stuff so people that are listening (laughs) if you're interested you can reach out Um, (laughs) (laughs) you mentioned that you had your first railroad author coming in do you publish people from Royal Road now? Oh, yeah, we do. So we basically, we had a shift in our company, like on the audiobook side of things. So everything's been paused for about two months, but we are picking back up now. So we actually have a couple people that have been sitting in the wings ready to go because mm-hmm. they wanted to publish their audiobook with their book. So we have The Grieving Lands and we have The Awakening Angel System. So those are both going to be coming out probably in August. So we're excited from that. And we're out there now, like, as a publisher, especially in, like, the lit RPG genre, Royal Road is where you go now. Like, it is very rare, and it's becoming even rarer and rarer that books are getting published, self-published on Amazon without audio already being picked up. So we're finding more and more Royal Road authors are shopping around to all the different audiobook publishers and Vice versa, 
audiobook publishers are shopping for authors on Royal Road. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how does it how does it look like? I mean, do you just sit there like a hawk looking at rising stars and then? So we actually don't just look at rising stars yeah. because we do have my my husband. He goes by the author name Han Yang or Marcus Slaus, Dan Raxer. But his lit RPG one is his main one, Han Yang. So he is obviously pretty knowledgeable in writing and what's good writing and what's a good premise <laughs> and what's a good story. And obviously, like being a rising star and all of those things and having a bunch of followers is good and obviously not a bad thing but it doesn't like we can find stories if it has a good premise it has a good story the writing is there we have like a dev editor and different things where sometimes if it's the right story and the right kind of writing that we're looking for mm -hmm. we can match them with the dev editor and we can get it to where it needs to be to be a fantastic story so we're not just looking on rising stars of course we do look there too but we look for other stuff as well mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. When you're saying like, for example, development, developmental editors, mm -hmm. how, how, do, how would I imagine that? So, I mean, I've published all my stuff on World World already. I'm, I'm on my second book and I'm young and cocky and I'm getting out there and go like, well, who wants to get my book? And you're like, well, this sounds pretty good, but mm -hmm. uh, we need to send it to a developmental editor. What does that process look like? So he'll usually just get onto like Discord with the author. He'll read through the story. He'll find maybe like, so he's been around in the genre for a long time as well. So he'll be like, you know, the the audience isn't going to like this. They're going to want this to happen. Or uh, maybe he'll <laughs> find like a plot hole. And for us, how we do it, we don't force anyone to make a change. So, you know, that's not always the case with everyone. We don't, we, mm -hmm. we're there to give you guidance, but we're not going to force you to make a change. If there's some like detrimental things that need to be changed, those would be agreed upon like beforehand, right? But we're not going to force a change that the author doesn't want to do, especially like on little things. But he'll just usually go in and kind of enhance it, help make the story more interesting. But he works like very one on one with mm -hmm. the author. And he himself kind of he has to be invested in the story, too. So he, he has to like it and want to work on it. Your, your husband or the editor? Well, we do both. So my <laughs> husband will sometimes he'll co-write like if he finds a book that he really likes he'll co-write it with the person. So if there's like Ooh. a premise or a story out there that he's just like, I love this, like he'll go in there and he'll dev edit and kind of uh, co-write it with the person. And then we have like an actual dev editor that works with us and he'll go in and work with the author on every story and help them build it. Especially if you're like a newer author or something like that, that's what he's there for. How many people take that offer? How many people actually go and say like, oh yeah, hot damn. This book that I've been writing for like a year that already is on, on railroad and is already generating me Patreon money, I'm going to go back and edit that for another five months. So our processes are not that, they don't take that long. But so we actually have people like, that's why they come to a publisher, right? Because anyone <laughs> can publish themselves on KDP. But a lot of times they are looking for that extra like dev editing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't, we're not like our goal is not to dive in there and, and massively change things. Like we're just looking to tweak it to make it a little bit better. We're not going to change like the essence of the story or anything. We always want the writer's story to be their story. Mm -hmm. cool. And we don't do it on all of them. Some of them we just mm -hmm. do like just your regular like line edits. Like let's make sure all the grammar and spelling and everything is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You were shouting out some stories that, that are coming out recently, but are there any Royal Guard stories that people might know already? So we had the, the Whisper of Iron. So that was one of those that it was actually pretty new on Royal Road uh, when we found it. And we took it um, and it was short, right? And Lit RPG is usually like got to be 100K plus. Mm -hmm. This was shorter for lit RPG genre. It was like 70K, but we knew that it was going to be good. And we actually, he did work with the dev editor a little bit just to improve a little, a couple things here and there. We got the cover, we got the typo and we got it out there. We got it out. We were able to get the audio done really quick mm -hmm. with, with Matt Hicks and Aaron Bateman. They did an awesome job. And that came out, I think a couple months ago, book two just came out. And he's working on book three now. And that one did, it was, it did fantastic. So we've really enjoyed working with Matt Pivots on that. 
And then my husband does post, he posts some of his stuff to Royal Road, not all of it. So he did like Earth's first starfighter on Royal Road and that we, that's been published for a a while. And some of his stuff takes off on Royal Road and some of it doesn't. So, and we did try, we had one going for a while. Um, It's called Sky Warden where we were actually going to, we were doing the audio as he wrote it and putting the audio up on YouTube for free. Oh. Um, to kind of do like a joint venture to see how that worked. But as I mentioned, we're now like in a, a more exclusive deal with Audible. Mm-hmm. I can't talk about the details of a lot, but we can't have that anymore. So mm-hmm. uh, we had to take it down. But it was interesting to try. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it, it, it's fun. And I mean, the, the entire ex- exclusivity and Amazon debate rages on. Uh, to, I've, I've, I've spoken about this with, I think, with every publisher i know and i'm going to say this you don't have to say anything about this right so i suspect that a lot of publishers kind of grin and bear that ex- ex- exclusivity because i think as a publisher i would like for stuff to be more openly available and more broader but i know for a fact that most books make 80 percent of the revenue on ku so yeah Right. Or like all authors. I mean, we I, I don't personally have a big problem with it, to be honest. Like we chose to be exclusive with Audible because we believe in Audible. And Kindle Unlimited is an amazingly awesome thing that has like led to so many people getting to be authors as their career that maybe in what, 20 years ago would have never happened. So I pretty much only have positive things to say about it. That's true, yeah. Do you believe someone who started off on Royal Road and got their, got their sea legs here will ever win a Nebula Award? Um, hey, I think anything is possible. So, I mean, I'm sticking with it. The genre is growing every single day. <laughs> it's growing every day. And I, I feel like every day, everything just becomes more and more. And like, it's just, it's an awesome situation for everyone. That's true, yeah. Uh, we have such a big opportunity here i mean there's going to be in a dc suicide squad isekai mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for example he who finds of monsters mm-hmm. the setting would make for amazing video games yep the book itself probably not because it's too op but the setting man yeah you could you can make a battle royale out of like all the essences that sounds pretty cool definitely What's some here? You know, anime storylines that would be good. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> obviously, like it, it it writes itself. Yeah, that's true. Were there any stories recently that really surprised you, out of your catalog or in general? So I have a couple that I've been kind of, you know, obviously I don't have a lot of free time, and the reason I got into audiobooks is because I am an audiobook fan because mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of time to actually visually read, but I do like the that lit. Rom, lit RPG rom-com by Mystic Neptune that's been out. I ran away to evil. I've been enjoying mm-hmm. that. Really good writer there. And I have talked to the author a little bit. Split I don't know down. if they made their decision yet or not, but they're a really awesome yeah. person and the story is very good and I enjoy it. So, <clears throat> and that, I guess that one's not as small these days, but it was back when I started looking at it. <laughs> they, they mentioned you on the podcast. Yeah. So yeah, we chatted and I, I mean, they're a great person and that's a great oh. story. The other one I have been enjoying is called Mirror World by Rain Harlow. Ooh. Got a female main character, a little RPG. So that's really fun for me to read just because there's not a whole lot of female main characters in Lit RPG. So I enjoy grabbing one when I can. And that's, that's about it for me. I mean, I don't have the time to, to read a whole bunch. <laughs> these days <laughs> oh I, I i totally get you i mean for me i have to force myself to do it because it so- suddenly it feels like work it feels like research yeah and audiobooks actually don't do that for me so i have i, I can just like lie on bed and listen to raven's daggers straight cat strut that's pretty cool yeah i love um, listening to audiobooks while driving like my favorite oh, yeah oh that's the best thing you what? just really get a chance to kind of like imagine it all in your like make the movie in your head of what's going yes. on Yes. I like taking walks while listening to audiobooks. Yeah, that's also really oh. good. Yeah, but a lot of our our main listeners are people that listen to audiobooks while they work. So mm-hmm. if you like a driving occupation, 
like that's going to be a, a big one of our main listeners that like truck drive people that drive trucks or delivery drivers or like that or even some some desk jobs they're able to listen while they work it kind of helps them concentrate better yeah yeah i've i've had like people who work in factories also listen to audiobooks and stuff like mm -hmm. that. so helps the day go by absolutely i mean yeah. anything where you don't actively need to make crucial decisions every single second or follow, follow some sort of story that is unfolding so pay attention to like details conversations or something you mm -hmm. can totally listen to audiobooks this is why what i really like plus if you do have a job like that then you can use audiobooks to relax so definitely big audiobook fan you don't have to solve you don't have to sell me on this <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean that actually pretty much also already is it right you gave your shout out so do you have other shout outs you want to give Oh, well, those are our, those are the next ones that are coming. So, and then we have some non Royal Road authors that are coming out soon too. Mm -hmm. That are people uh, that have reached out to us that chose not to go on Royal Road first. So those are all coming. So August is going to be big for us. I know some people were wondering what happened to us the past couple of months. Mm -hmm. It was a good thing. So, <laughs> and we're back. Things are happening again. Um, so we're excited to be back publishing again. That's pretty cool. So you pressed pause and then you pressed record. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I yeah, did? That, that pun didn't really land at all. Oh, I operations. thought you meant on, on this <laughs> this thing. I was like, I don't no. even know how to do that. No. <laughs> Quit FPG Podcast, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this has been Jessica from Royal God Publishing. And I've been the idiot who does the puns. If you want more <laughs> puns or if you want to listen to other publishers, um, you can find the link in the description below. Um, I'm hoping to get a list of all of them. So if you have a publisher that I haven't recorded yet, um, and you see this, then please poke me, poke my Discord. Um, I'm always available on the Council of the Eternal Hiatus Discord. Uh, and give me some heads up. All right. Thanks, Jessica. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>